Ooh, there's a children's book here about clowns? Don't open that! <laughs> okay, nerd. Will I be able to escape before I marry a ghost? Find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. To have and to hold, from this day forward, now and for all time. Why am I getting so f***ing emotional? This is so stupid. It's a f***ing game. Hello everybody, I'm Degenerate, and welcome back to the Groom of Gallagher Mansion. I literally cannot stop thinking about this game. So, we're going to continue exactly where we left off. Oh. <laughs> right here. Apologies. Alright, last time... We put... We made it our way into the mansion of course we met elias gallagher the busty individual and we went and picked our bouquet of flowers because we are to be betrothed so after that we s tried to do some research on this photo here in the middle and now we're going into some rooms to investigate the manor so let us begin. I pick one of the many doors in the foyer and swing it open, wincing a little at how badly it needs to be oiled. Oh my gosh. I can think of another thing that could be oiled up. Huh. Elias wasn't kidding when he said that some of the rooms would be in disarray. It definitely doesn't look as nice as the study. I think this is a living room or a lounge. There's couches at least. The patterns have worn off them, and the material is torn open in a few places. I run my hand over the back of the low of the love seat. Anything interesting there? <laughs> okay. No, I'm not gonna do it. Aside from the couches, there's a rocking chair, a mounted deer head, a painting of a building, a grandfather clock, and a bookshelf. Elias hasn't worked his magic here, so it's a bit discrepant. Decrepit. I got it. I'll investigate everything else before I take a look at the books. I wouldn't even know where to begin with that, anyways. Uh, psh, inspect the painting first. I feel like the paintings are important. Another impressionist painting, this time of a building's facade. It doesn't seem to be the manor, though, so I wonder if this painting was any has any significance. Do you know if there are any secret passages in this mansion? I wouldn't doubt it since the Gallaghers had this place built just for them, but I wouldn't know where they are. They're secret for a reason. Right. Gee, thanks. I try to lift up the painting just enough to see if there's anything behind it. There isn't. It would have been cool if there was though. My first attempt? Let's look at the deer head. I walk over to the mounted deer head and peer into its soulless, long, dead eyes. Taxidermy almost always freaked me out as a kid, and that never changed as I got older. The Gallagher men liked to hunt for sport, didn't they? All of them but Elias. Duh. Can't go outside to save his life. From my interactions with him, he probably couldn't even hurt a fly. I don't really see the point of killing animals for fun, like at least eat the venison, you know? I'm actually surprised I don't see any rifles mounted on the walls for decoration. How big are the antlers on that deer anyway? Why does that matter? Really small, nothing to write home about. Did you know that in the winter, deer, moose, and other mammals who grow antlers will just shake them clean off? Maybe they shot that deer in the spring when it was regrowing them. Oh yeah, they, they just shake them off, it just comes off. They don't have to forcibly break it. Huh, thanks for the fun trivia. I guess look at the clock. I peer at the face of the grandfather clock, frowning when I notice that the hands are missing. 
I know analog clocks are a thing of the past, but I really like the aesthetics of a ticking clock. There's just something about them that's so cool. You think so? I feel like they're too inaccurate. If a gear stops turning or the battery dies out, then you have to manually set it again. Mm -hmm. Digital clocks hook up to the internet so they don't have that problem. Right. Do we have the internet this time? No. Taylor, you're missing the point. It's about the aesthetics. Taylor lets out a loud grumble instead of bothering to argue with me. I guess we're done then. Hey Taylor, I've looked at everything else aside from the shelf, so I'm gonna check out the books. Any ideas on where to start? Tell me what you're looking at. I scan the spines for titles. There's an encyclopedic encyclopedia series, a dictionary, a thesaurus, a bible, bible hymns, an assortment of Shakespearean plays. I pull out the old tomb of Romeo and Juliet and flip through the yellowed pages, or at least try to. The corners of the pages disintegrate in my fingers. Jesus. <laughs> Bingo! I finally got a match on that painting from earlier. Did you have to scare me like that? <laughs> I wasn't scared. Oh yeah, who is it? I slide the book in my hand back onto the shelf before hazard hazarding a seat on one of the couches. Moments later, Taylor texts me an old black and white photo. Check it out. That's Mama Gallagher herself. Oh, wow. Mildred loved to host tea parties and dances at the manor. Always made a grand show of the family bling while she was at it. Mm-hmm. I don't blame her. She's very beautiful. She was the envy of the land until that Gallagher curse killed her. The land. <laughs> Anyways, that's one mystery solved. Think there's anything else in here? I mean, there's a painting in here. Oh, well, it says the building. I stand up and check the shelf again. Ooh, Ooh there's a children's book here about clowns. Don't open that. <laughs> Okay, nerd. Mm, yes, I am a nerd! What worm? I'm studious! Well, anything else really calls out to me, so I'm going to the next room over. I pause momentarily. Uh, over? <laughs> Roger that. Why did we do that? I hate that that wasn't a choice. I would have chose not to do that. I slip back out to the foyer and stare down the other doors. A map of this place would really help right about now. It's not an RPG, so... Well, here we go. Dining area. <laughs> I push past another door at random and pe peek my head inside before walking in. It's a modestly sized room with a rectangular wooden table. Surrounded by chairs alongside with a small chandelier on the ceiling. I think this is the dining room. Seems suited for eating meals here with a large family or guests, at least. And it's in much better condition than the living room. What else is in there? Lamps. Fireplace, table, chairs, lamps, and a fancy looking cabinet. More books in there, looks like. Books in the dining area? Take a look around and tell me if there's anything interesting before you indulge in literature again. Okay, Mr. Judgy. Roger that. The fireplace. I head over to the fireplace and start knocking on the walls. I hope there's a secret passage here. No matter where I knock, I don't find any sections that feel or sound different. No dice. No. Dice. Keep at it, bud. Your dream will come true one day. I really... Now I kind of want there to be a secret passage somewhere. Uh, table. This is such a nice table. It's got a lacquered wood finish and everything. Can you stick to the mission, please? Dang, I can't appreciate the... Hey, I'm doing a lot of walking here. Let me sit down for a moment. Taylor huffs in my ear while I plop down on one of the chairs, which happens to be surprisingly cushy. You know, you never really answered my question from before. Which one? About the hypothetical ghost clown servant. No, 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 we are not talking about clowns! Hmm, but we are though. 
What if a ghost clown made a you a blueberry pan- <laughs> I realized it immediately. Immediately. We know exactly who they're talking about. We know exactly. Let's move on though. I don't have to say it. What if a ghost clown man made you blueberry pancakes in a bid to gain your friendship and trust? What if? I don't even like blueberries, and waffles are superior in every way. They can hold syrup, melted butter, or whatever you top them with, so you lose less to your plate. I am a connoisseur of French toast myself. Uh -huh. But Taylor, I keep telling you that you need to lay your face down in a fresh stack of fluffy pancakes at least once in your life. It's like being hugged by a litter of puppies. Think of all the litters we could raise together. The callbacks. I am not putting food on my face or my face into food. Uh, you know Elias' suit is blue, so I'm thinking. Why not put my face in Elias's big blue honkers? <laughs> no, no, end of conversation. Get back to the mission. Okay. I click my tongue in annoyance and he clicks back. All right, fine. I said it though. I could use more light in here, but these lamps are probably dead, aren't they? Yeah, they're just as dead as Elias. We didn't have to do that. I wonder if collectors would go wild over some antique light bulbs. Of all the things in this mansion, you're thinking of stealing the light bulbs? Why not? The books crumble at touch. So, what? You want me to walk out of there, out of here, with a table? Eh, fair enough. Exactly. And the books they crumble. So, I hold one of the lamps in my hand and try to twist the bulb off, but it doesn't budge. That shit's stuck. Scratch that, I'm not gonna bother. Hey, wanna know another fun fact? No. Thomas Edison didn't actually invent the light bulb. He bought the patent from two dudes named Henry Woodward and Matthew Eben. Okay. Edison was able to claim fame thanks to the fact that he had enough capital to finance improvements to the design. He had dollar dollar bills, so I guess. So the moral of the story is that the rich get richer and the poor stay starving? Yes. My point was that popular history gets written by the winners, but that works too. Okay, winners? That's just the same as saying the richer people. Finished. Have they got an achievement called Trivia Master? Knowledge is power. Nothing else to look at but the cabinet now. Let me know what you find. I kneel down by the floor and inspect the books on the bottom. The seam to... These seem to be the cookbooks for various European cuisines. Irish, Polish, Dutch, and so forth. No dessert cookbooks here, but maybe they're behind the glass? Right! Elias wanted to bake a cake for you! Would he even be able to eat it? Uh, who cares? It's a cake. How would he- wait, how would I eat it? <laughs> he did have a tea set in the study, so maybe it's like food offerings for the departed? I don't know. Uh, can you say that again? I think the line's coming out again. Uh oh. I said there's static in the earpiece and I'm suddenly overcome with dizziness. I groan while trying to get back upright, grabbing the back of the chair for balance. Ooh. We're finally getting somewhere. Suddenly my vision darkens and the room spins. My feet can't touch the ground. I'm falling, falling down, into a yawning abyss. Why do we keep, like... Oh, we're back to that now? Passing out at every waking moment? I open my eyes. Behind me, the chandelier starts swinging and the fireplace roars to life. And yet I'm freezing. Like there's ice slushing through my veins again. It's horrible and I'm scared. This is definitely the same dining room. But everything feels wrong. I grip the chair harder and lift my head. That was a mistake. Ooh. Encased in the glass of the cabinet is a figure of a woman. Jeez Louise. 
She's so far away, but she's coming closer and closer and closer with a knife in her hand and a sh- Oh, Cheshire cat grin painted across her lips. Dripping with bloodlust, her needle-like gaze makes a pin board of me. I can't breathe. I have to get out of here. How can I escape? In an act of defiance, I spin in the opposite direction. Ma'am. And try to make a break for it, but my feet are cut cemented in place. Hey, can you hear me? Answer if you can hear me! I'm about to die, bro. Uh, <laughs> get away from me! My knees give up. Are you okay? I collapsed. Were you attacked? Yes. Not physically. Static took over the line again. Doesn't matter. And I heard something garbled from your end. Some kind of whispering or chanting? Was that you? Why would I whisper or chant? No, that... That wasn't me. I swallow deep gasps of air trying to regain my breath as Taylor's voice rings in my ear. Hey, what did you see? Some psycho bitch with a knife. DuPont. Violet DuPont. Oh, the bitch that killed him? I spit out the name without thinking. I know whoever I saw was a woman, but was it really Violet? I'm starting to think there are some other spirits in this mansion besides Elias. Why else would there be interference when he's not even in the room? <laughs> the room. Um, I'm not making fun of him. I just, I tend to like mock people if I like the way a word is said. Um, she died in here too? I think Goodness. that's- Are you quite all right? What? Yes. I look up at the sound of Elias' voice. Why do you look so pale? Big honkers. I apologize. Oh, my sweet Elias. I simply... Am I going to tell him that I had a vision of someone, probably the woman he was supposed to marry, charging at me with a knife? Did she, like, cut his head off like that? That's terrible. Clean, too. She must have been skilled. I'm also skilled <laughs> in other things. It simply feels as though a thousand years have passed since I last saw you, my love, and I began to feel a bit lonely. Taylor groans on the other side while I fake a pacifying grin. It's been like, what, 20 minutes tops? You told me to cater to him, and I'm doing it. Forgive me for leaving you to your own devices for so long, dearest. I am here now, so there is no need to linger in the despair of solitude. Okay, please unbutton your shirt really quick. My gratitude, Elias, but surely my pain is nothing compared to your own. Worry not, my love, for my years in the flesh prepared me for such an existence. I am not forgotten. <laughs> Who could forget those knockers? <laughs> It could only be my imagination, but I see a flicker of pain in his eyes for a moment, as if he's trying to convince himself of that last bit. Why, even before you came to me, there would be the occasional visitor to my manor. None quite so welcome, mind you. Most were in a stupefied, intoxicated state. The partyers, or whatever. Good entertainment, but not the company I'd choose to spend the rest of my waking moments with. Unlike waking you, moments? Ah, 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 what? Man, this guy is just... Ugh! Who are you? Giving me fun facts every five seconds. This man has a bustling chest. Like, what? He's got better assets, bro. <laughs> assets? I'm trying my hardest not to roll my eyes at Taylor's unnecessary commentary. Let us not linger on such irrelevant matters, then. Shall we resume our preparations for the ceremony? Why, yes. A splendid idea. Elias moves towards the glass cabinet with a bounce in his float. Swinging the doors open, he starts humming. Our wedding shall be oh so fine. The layer cake most of all, unforgettable. Nana's baking divine, and when paired with white wine, to not taste it would be quite regrettable. <laughs> Dr. Seuss. Oh, though I do miss her cream pies as well. She knows are quite appropriate for a wedding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my 
my god! Did he just say cream pie? Yes. Get your head out of the gutter or I'll make you cry. She wrote the recipe in a manner such that you could make it in any sort of flavor so long as you had the proper ingredients. Say, what flavor shall our cake be, my dear? Dang, I actually don't know. What are the choices? Oh, there's so many options to choose from, aren't there? I simply can't decide. What do you suggest, dearest? Elias thumbs the spine of the cookbooks with a little more focus. I was quite partial to Earl Grey myself, but vanilla is always agreeable no matter the party. Though perhaps a delicate lemon with hints of lavender. How do you make something taste like lavender? Hmm. Oh my gosh, your chest. Is something the matter, Elias? I must have misplaced grandmother's dessert recipes. I can't find them. Now we gotta go on a, a Easter egg hunt. Elias lowers his hands from the cabinet and sighs, crustfallen. Where did I leave them? I know I have seen it within the past decade at least. Decade? Hey, here's our chance to look for more clues somewhere else. Uh, okay, fine. Tether makes a good point. Perhaps I can assist in your search? With two sets of eyes, I'm sure we'll find your grandmother's recipe in no time. I am loath to ask my betrothed to make up for my mistakes, but yes, I would appreciate your help. Okay. Do you have any inkling of an idea where you, you may have left them? Unfortunately not. I do know that it must be in the manor, however. None of my possessions have left the grounds. Obviously. I will investigate the common room. Take care where you may search, and be cautious of the second floor. I have done my best to stabilize the structure, but uh, it does take quite some energy. He's a strong individual. Doing this all by himself? Dang. Understood, my love. May we find your grandmother's recipe soon. Elias bows before he takes his leave through the door, and I release a breath I didn't realize I was holding. Is he finally gone? Calm down. <laughs> Looks like I can try looking around on the second floor now, but where should we start? Well, you never got to hunt around the study since Elias was hanging out in there, but I wonder if you can find his bedroom. Uh, I'm like a magnet. For bedrooms. <laughs> Taylor pauses, and when he speaks again, I can hear his voice waver. We also have no idea what caused that vision you saw earlier. Should I return to the study, search for Elias' bedroom, or stay here in the dining room where I saw that vision? I can only be in one place at one at a time. Obviously. Come on. We're going to the bedroom. <laughs> that was an obvious choice. I exit the dining room and head towards some stairs to the side of the foyer. Yeah. If I remember right, if I remember right, Elias Gallagher lived a solitary and mostly sed sedentary life inside this manor. If he was put on a on bed rest for the majority of his time here, chances are that he'd stash personal valuables in his bedroom for easy access. I don't know where his room would be, but I get the feeling it's upstairs. Either way, we're about to find out. And what are you planning to do? Reenact the BJ scene from Ghostbusters? What's the BJ scene from Ghostbusters? I laugh, shaking my head. You're the one who wrote those types of scenes in that notebook I found in the club room. Wait, what? <laughs> what? What are we talking about? Anyways, though... <laughs> who said I wasn't gonna? Taylor starts to stutter as he tries to come up with an excuse. That... Uh, I, I never... How did you even... He partakes in spicy literature. 
I try not to break out in laughter for fear that Elias might hear me. That notebook contains highly classified information, I'll have you know, and I do not appreciate the invasion of my privacy. Right. You're the one who left it open. Still, I... <sighs> Never mind. Forget it. You're basically asking someone to read something. If it's just open? Oh, this door is slightly ajar. I guess I'll go in. I swing the door completely open, wincing at the hinges creak. As the hinges creak. Oh. This place doesn't actually have bad. Now let's destroy it together, Elias. What's wrong? The layout is the same, but it almost looks sad. I take back what I said. <laughs> I take this moment to look at what's in front of me. In the center is a bed that's perfectly made. Fluffy pillows, nowhere to be found. Doned in silk covers, sit upon a thick comforter. Or, no, either way I can't see it still. My hand runs over a plush fabric as I walk up to the bedside table. There's a few books here, but overall this room is almost barren compared to the ones to the one I woke up in. I'm actually not too surprised. There were seven kids, and the heads of the household after all, so it wouldn't be unusual for the bedrooms to look the same. Mm-hmm. None of them had any type of personality though? Come on now. I guess that's fair. I catch a glimpse of something on the vanity and head over to it. Hey, there's an ornate box on the vanity. Sur surely something like this has to come s contain something important in it, right? Be careful! We don't know if that's spring-loaded with some kind of trap! Well, we haven't found any secret doors, so... I don't think it will be, but... I hold my breath and take off the lid slowly. Glass shards? That's it? Seriously? Why waste such a neat box like that on trash? How do you know it's trash? Why do you think it's in there? You... Alright, let me stop. Maybe it's something important? Kinda doubt it. Got you. I slide the lid back onto the box and look around the rest of the bedroom. There's a bookshelf in the corner I hadn't noticed when I walked in. Guess what? There's another bookshelf in here. Guess it must actually be Elias' bedroom after all. What's on it? Books. Seems to be all the fiction. Jane Array, Persuasion, Sentimental Education, The Portrait of a Lady. The click of the keyboard is comforting as Taylor s lets out a chuckle. <laughs> Those are all romance novels. What's wrong with that? My fingers gently brush over the well-worn spines. It looks like they've been read countless times. Not only did he lack familial love, it looked like Elias didn't have any platonic or romantic love either. He was stuck here and only had a fantasy world to live in. Oh my gosh! This is hurting me. Don't feel too bad for him. We can't change what his life was like no matter how sad it is. It's already over. That's even more sad. The least I can provide is solace. Make his afterlife a little more enjoyable, less lonely. Don't fall for his act. Oh my gosh. I scoff slightly. Act? What act? Elias has not once shown any hostility or invasiveness. He doesn't have any mal malicious intent. But, but what if he tries to possess you? Didn't he? Come on. That's what I want to happen. I hope it happens. Taylor, I appreciate your concern, <laughs> and I care about you a lot, but accusing Elias of something like that without any evidence, especially considering how he died, is unreasonable. You're being paranoid. He, His wife killed him, no? I'm pretty sure. Why do you think she was in that room swinging a knife around? Like she's fucking Amori. I can't. With this guy. The line is silent. For a moment, I think he may have hung up on me. But his quiet voice finally breaks the silence. I'm sorry. Yeah, you should be. That was very rude of you. He sounds upset. It elicits a soft sigh from me, my whole demeanor softening. I apologize if I sounded harsh. Elias just deserves someone too, you know? He's all alone. I'm just really worried about you, bud. You're alone in there. No, I'm not. I got Elias. 
Don't worry, Taylor. If I were truly in danger, I'd have asked you to come save me by now. Taylor's voice sounds less upset as he speaks. Yeah. Yeah, of course. You're right. Uh, I'm always right. I'm Einstein up in this bitch. My love! Are you here? Yes! Yes, Elias, I'm here. Shoot, Elias is coming. He is? Can you hide or something? No, why would I do that? I'm trying. Elias appears before me <laughs> the moment I turn towards the doorway. What are you doing in here, my dear? <laughs> Testing out this bed and make sure it's sturdy enough. The, um, the door was open and I noticed quite a few books on the shelves, so I wanted to see if the recipe might be in here. I think I got him. I pull out a random book, a smile on my face. You have quite the taste after all, Mr. Elias Gallagher. My grin widens as Elias blushes. What? Is he getting embarrassed over there? Refrain. I read it for the plot. It's actually quite good. It's a romance book. I, I doubt you guys were writing about crazy stuff in the past. Or were you? Really? Let's see. I open to a random page. The corner is folded like a bookmark. I clear my throat and start to read. Let's see. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the first fucking sentence. Our clothes were long gone. I couldn't keep my hands off her. Every inch of her body called out to me. Oh. Heavens. Hmm. I bet that was the last line, the next line. Elias covers his face, bending over from embarrassment. Really? What does it look like from back there? I could hear Taylor having a laughing fit in the earpiece. Ignoring my own embarrassment, I put the book away and comfort Elias, however half-heartedly. My apologies, it's quite alright that you, uh, that you indulge in all types of literature. I should have hidden those books better when you were asleep. I'm so sorry you had to see that. I don't care, baby girl. I do not care. I mean, it's fine. Most people are interested- Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> he's a- he's a- he's a treat to be around. Are we gonna say anything? Where are you going? Don't fade away. Are you alright, dear? <laughs> Elias lets out a groan and peeks at me through his hands. He then slowly straightens, finding it hard to look at me in the eye. Uh, I am... Um, yes. I just find the subject of physical intimacy to be rather difficult to talk about. Why is that? Oh, don't tell me the guy's a prude! He's freaking obsessed with marriage! What does he expect married allosexual people to do? What the f*** is- oh my gosh. What does allosexual mean? I love learning new things, I promise. Everyone in the Victorian era was a prude, Taylor. Okay. Did you say something? No. I cleared my throat loudly while Taylor sighs on the other line. What I said was, you were never close to anyone before you met me. I, well... <laughs> Right? He's f fading away again. <laughs> Elias plays nervously with his fingers, fascinated with the decor of his room instead of me. Have you ever kissed anyone? No! I was never really thought of as attractive to anyone. <laughs> lying he's lying <laughs> he's lying he's lying don't listen to him nobody listen to him <laughs> he's lying there's no way someone with hips like that and a chest like that wasn't attractive you're fucking lying moving on hold on you not attractive you're kidding me right Elias shrinks further into himself. Elias, you're one of the most handsome men I've ever met. I'm serious. The things I love to do. 
<laughs> I'm finally in character. I love it. The what you do to who? Shh, Taylor. I'm talking to someone right now. Don't pull a don't don't pull a jack. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh shit. Maybe I was too forward with that. Darling, I'm quite flattered by your compliments, but I have my reasons for being inexperienced. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> you know why? You want to know why? Let me tell you a secret. Come closer. Come. Come here. I am also inexperienced. <laughs> Are you serious? Well, beyond simply never having been properly wed before, of course. Right. You guys were that type of people. No physical intimacy before marriage. That's it? Am I right? What sorts of things strike your fancy? I'm sure... Uh, ah! I'm sure you'll perform well in the bedroom. I'll guide you through it. I'm not experienced like that. Uh, pff, let's ask. Let's find out. What sorts of things strike your fancy? He seems pretty giddy now. Elias stops fidgeting as he calms down. Oh, plenty of things. Like the flowers from earlier, reading books, writing, drinking tea. The list can go on and on, really. You know that's not what I fucking meant. Don't play with me, Elias. I'll kiss you. <laughs> Holy shit! He's so innocent! This is hilarious! <sighs> I'm thinking things again. I want to hit Taylor so bad right now, but I can't really reach through my earpiece to strangle him from here, so I bite the inside of my mouth. That's lovely, dear, but I meant your interests in more... in a more intimate sense. Intimate? Oh, heavens. This really isn't something to discuss out of wedlock. <laughs> <sighs> Have you ever heard of Shibari? <laughs> Please, I'm really only interested in satisfying my partner. Now, may we please return to the wedding preparations? Let me, let me, let me, let me talk to you. Let me talk to you real quick. Man, let me talk to you real quick. Do you know what that means? <laughs> you know what that means, right? As someone with lady bits, you know what that means, right? You better get a fork and a knife, because you're about to eat. Why, yes, of course. <laughs> he floats out of the room, and I follow him out to the foot of the stairs. I initially came to find you so I could ask what flavor of cake you would like. Have you decided? Cream. Oh, that's right. Let me think. Cream. Milk. Goo goo ga ga. We walk back to the first floor hallways as I ponder my options. Vanilla Earl Grey, 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 Grey. He said he liked Earl Grey, but I kind of want vanilla. Is that so wrong to ask for? Probably not. I'm picking it. An excellent choice. You have the most wonderful taste, my dear. Wait till we get back to the bedroom, bro. Please, let me handle the remainder. If you wish to rest, please, I encourage you to do so. But the pillows are right there, my love. Thank you, Elias. I shall take you up on that offer. Elias bows before floating off to some other part of the manor. Leave me alone. <laughs> Again. Okay, he's gone. Hey, bud. You sound really exhausted. You should find some place to sit down and rest. You know what, guys? I am tired. I'm tired of this bullshit. Yeah, give me a minute, all right? I take a look around to the hallway. It really doesn't help that all these doors look the same. Struggling, I pick a random door and try the knob. And to my surprise, it turns. I guess I'll go in here. 
the lavatory. I'm not entirely sure what I expected, but it's a bathroom. Is it at least clean? Who cares? I'm not gonna take a shit. Why is the toilet facing that way? Ugh! It's facing the sink. That's so weird. Dusty but moldy. I guess I can sit on the porcelain throne. Bro. I sweep my gown to the side and close the lid before taking a seat. So how are you feeling? You've been through a lot, and that's the understatement of the century. Calm down. There's worse things to go through. I'm physically okay, more mentally exhausted, really. We've got so much stuff to sort through. I know I look weird without my glasses, you don't have to tell me. <laughs> Just want to clean it really quick. Jeez. Maybe we should go over everything we've learned so far. I got you. I don't know how much time I have, but we might as well try. Assume you have a little, so talk as fast as you can. Naked. Okay, okay. Elias has been nothing but a complete gentleman to me. Shame about the rest of the house, but his heart seems like it's in the right place. <sighs> if you say so. <laughs> Moving on. He is quite impressive at making bouquets. Maybe I am too? Should we take this back to the campus? Take what? Ghostly flower arrangements? Yes! Because it was thought put into it. Yes! Yeah, someone's gotta be interested, and there's no flower club at the university. It's an avenue, at least. There has to be more that you found, please? <laughs> Just teasing, of course there's more. That sighting of Violet in the dining room was a lot. Like, a lot. I know, and I didn't even see it. <laughs> if you did, you would've shit your pants. Mm. I think in a brief moment, I hated her. Whoa. Uh. Why? Why shouldn't I? She shouldn't be here. She shouldn't be haunting Elias. She's the true danger. And truth be told, I don't know if, if her spirit's actually here at all. She might simply be a figment of Elias' memories. So Elias is the true danger then? Oh my gosh, he found any opportunity to pin it back on him. No, that's not what I said. You're starting to worry me. And you're starting to annoy me. Okay. Then there's what happened just now. I still can't believe you managed to find his smut collection. I don't even know what to say. I didn't mean to, I swear. I just picked up the book at random. We seem to be really good at doing that. I would have loved to see the look on his face. <laughs> Though you really didn't have to ask him his favorite <laughs> position afterwards. I didn't say that. I said what tickles your fancy. You didn't have to say all that. I, oh, I, hate I would you. have loved. Stop. <laughs> I didn't ask that. Now I have to censor what you said. Making me do extra work in the editing process. It was already awkward, so I kind of just wanted to see what would happen, you know? Yeah, because I'm a curious kitty. I ended up laughing a bit too, despite myself. Anyways, I wonder why he had a box full of mirror shards. It just seemed so out of place in his room. I couldn't tell you anything about it. Maybe the dude's just a weirdo. <laughs> you really laid it on thick. I don't think he's like that. Are you seriously starting to feel something for Elias? Because I'm starting to think he's casting some kind of magic on you to make you feel connected to him. So what if he is? What is so wrong about that? Hmm? What's so wrong? Honestly, and I mean it this time, I want you to leave this place. And I want a busty ghost in my face. Guess we're not getting each other's wishes today. There's something very wrong going on. Nothing we read said anything like this would happen. That's why people investigate things. To learn more. And I'm trying to get in them good. Okay. Moving on. Taylor, calm down. 
I know this isn't what we expected, but we were expecting. But what were we expecting exactly? Be honest. Did you think this would actually pan out? Three years of failure, and now we're finally here. We finally got what we wanted. And we planned so much. Hell, fantasized so much about what we do. We finally met a restless spirit. We tried our best to soothe them, to help them move on, to bring them the happiness they lost, to finish their unfinished business. Now that we had that opportunity, shouldn't we do what we said we'd do all along? Maybe we can help him move on? And help him get off? Please, we don't know what kind of tricks he has up his sleeve. I don't want you to fall for anything he might be up to. I don't want to say this. <laughs> I won't. I promise. Am I even sure Elias is up to anything beyond trying to wed me? Uh, change that W to a B and we're good. And will breaking Elias's heart any further really be better than going through with all this? The next thing to do is to pick up some jewelry and then we're ready to go. The wedding will probably be at dawn, maybe just before. I don't know for sure. Do you want me to s A little beep echoes in my ear. Oh, the battery is dying on our earpiece. Uh, bud? Eek. Guess I gotta hang up the phone. I check my phone. And that beep means exactly what I think it means. My phone battery is almost dead. The phone itself? Crap, my phone is dying. What? Sorry. Beep. I'll call you back. I promise. Out of juice. You didn't bring a portable charger? Nope. Why would I? Honestly, I didn't think I'd be here that long. And I didn't have much time to plan. I'm coming in! <laughs> Please don't. What? I'm not leaving you alone in there with no contact. I'm responsible for that much. Stop. Stall for time. I'll see you soon. Over and out. The line goes dead. The pounding of my heart intensifies like a symphony reaching my reaching a crescendo. And like an aria bursting from the <laughs> the melody, a voice triumphantly calls out to me. My dear, can you come to the living room? I I was gonna say it, but I decided to hold that back. Yes. I have no choice but to oblige. I got you, my love. As I step through the corridors, each creak of my footfalls is a thunderous is as thunderous as a waterfall. My phone vibrates one last time, a final warning before embracing its inevitable death. Maybe it'll like follow me around as a little ghost phone. I arrive at the door and enter the living room where Elias awaits. At this point, there's no hiding my stress. I'm not that good of an actor, and Elias would see right through me. Hi, you thick individual. Still, I do my best to compose myself and step into the living room. Elias is waiting for me, just as he said he would be. Oh, my dear, you look paler than me. Yeah, I think I'm dying, by the way. I... <laughs> I've been a little too enthralled by his... Frame. Yeah, big, nice, big honkers. Um, and I think we're dying. It's it's starting to feel like it. We're super tired. We're pale. We can touch him. Eh. Oh, yeah, and the cold thing. The fact that we're cold all the time. Yeah, we're definitely dying or already dead. Yeah, I probably do. What on earth happened? I don't know. I think I took a mean shit in there. I lost contact with someone very important just now. Have you ever been contacted by a spirit medium? That's something like what I've been doing, but that contact has been cut short. 
You've been talking with someone else? <laughs> what does that mean for us? For you? For me? For us. I have, for my own safety, when I came to this manor today, I didn't know what to expect. I thought you expected me. <laughs> Stop it. Stop flirting with me. I hoped for you, Elias, but until I came here, how could I know what was true? Perhaps I'd arrive to an empty estate moments from collapse without anyone to greet me. Just another false rumor about a haunted mansion. Or maybe you wouldn't be as friendly as the Cor Cortis? Ah! Oh, it says courteous. Dummy. Or maybe you wouldn't be as friendly and courteous as all the whispers implied. Maybe you wouldn't be the one lingering in this mansion at all. Or so many other possibilities. How many ghosts have you met in your lifetime, Elias? A fair question. Well, I have faint memories of catching specters out of the corner of my eye. These little guys floating across all over your beautiful face? Unexplained disturbances and whatnot. But I have not conferred with any ghosts like the two of us have chatted. Certainly not in life. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So you understand my mortal caution? <laughs> Elias pouts. My friend, my medium, was the one guiding me through this manor safely. And did you just meet this friend today, or...? Yeah. I've known him for a long time. He was the one who told me about this manor in the first place. Listen, Elias, I've met zero ghosts until you, but not for lack of trying. Both myself and... T uh, that's... Taylor, that's my friend, have spent the better part of the past three years searching for the paranormal. And that's what led me to you. I don't know if I would be here if I hadn't spent that time looking for so long. Huh? What was I supposed to do that? Marvelous. My dear, how wonderful it is that you finally found me. Wait, think about it. <laughs> I know this is super off topic, but if his head is not actually attached to his body, that means it can be removed. So things could be happening over there, and things could be happening over there. Do we get the gist? Probably. <laughs> Though, would you have sought the hand of any other ghosts you may have met? I doubt anyone is as thick as you, my love. A guilty sigh emanates from my lips, permeating the air. If they were willing to court me, I would I wouldn't automatically say no, but I imagine based on what I've read that none of the ghosts I otherwise might have run into around here would be interested in such things. And as for your friend, how exactly has he served as a medium? Why are we still talking about him? <laughs> well, um, this earpiece is my method of communication, communicating discreetly. I take a the bit of plastic out of my ear and hold it out for Elias to observe. Whether he has any knowledge of such modern things or not, I have no clue. But sadly, it stopped working and needs to be charged. I don't think you're able to help here either. So, to contact him again? Oh god, I think we're telling him a little too much? Don't you think? You'd have to leave? Yes. Actually, he's coming here. We're the dumbest person in the world. Now that the link between us is broken, he's not going to let me out of his sight. Oh, is that so? Unfortunately. Ah, uh, I mean, yes. Is Elias blushing? He's not suddenly getting jealous of Taylor, is he? Well, he's heard about the wedding, yes? Our wedding? <laughs> I like this one. Yes. Well, I suppose a wedding without guests isn't much of a wedding. <laughs> He's a confident one. Everything is just about in order for the ceremony anyway. And 
I hope your friend realizes how safe you are with me by now. Okay. He can wait outside for a little while we finish our preparations. You gonna lock the door? Baby, lock the doors and turn the lights down low. Shall we go ahead and place the final touches on this affair? Yeah. We shall, dear. He offers me his arm, and I take it. I have no f***ing idea about what's about to happen. Can Taylor even get inside? Will he spill the beans about my facade? <laughs> beans. Will I be able to escape before I marry a ghost? Find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. Do I want to escape? Now then, shall we? Mm -hmm. It is time to show you my precious family jewels. <laughs> Uh, Elias and I make our way to the staircase as I softly grip his ethereal arm. I watch as his free hand grips the dark mahogany railing. The stairs creak a little too loud. Leaning closer to Elias, my hold on him tightens. Do not fret, my dear. These stairs are safe as long as you stay by my side. They better be. I give him an uncertain smile, trying not to remember the state of the decrepit stairs when I first entered the mansion. They now look ele elegant, lined with soft, gold-trimmed carpeting. Oh, wow. Careful now. That's so cool. Oh my gosh. Elias places his hand atop mine as we walk down the hallway. He wears a faint, complacent smile. Is it tiring? Hmm? Making the mansion. I pause, not sure how I should phrase the question. Not all of it is exactly hospitable. You mean... Making it look like a ghost of its former glory. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He chuckles at his little pun. <laughs> With a gentle pat of my head, he sighs. <sighs> Admittedly, yes. It's quite tiring. Oh, but my poor if it baby. makes you comfortable, then I shall keep doing it. It also brings back many memories. Are they good ones, my love? The smile on his face drifts into wistfulness. For a moment, he looks almost sad. I regret bringing it up. My grip on his arm loosens, and I give him a smile back. I think you've done an excellent job, Elias, with everything. I appreciate your kind words, my dear. I'm glad. I love you. We're back at his... What? We're back at his bedroom. Just a moment, my dear. Oh, right. Family jewels. Okay. <laughs> he lets go of my arms, making his way to the vanity. Instead of reaching for one of the drawers, he presses his hand against the wall, causing the vanity to lower and reveal a hidden compartment. I know this mansion had at least one secret passage. Oh! <gasps> Elias <laughs> sifts through the drawers inside the compartment, eventually pulling out an unassuming dark wooden box. He slowly opens it, reveals a ring, necklace, and a pair of earrings. Ah, here we are then. Nice. My eyes light up with wonder as the jewelry sparkles, even without any light shining on it. The ring is a gold band with a large diamond at the center, a beautiful classic for a reason. Just the sheer size of the diamond alone catches the eye. Meanwhile, the necklace is a string of pearls with a ruby amulet on it and so very dazzling to gaze upon. It's like looking at of the very definition of opulence. And lastly, the earrings are a drop pair with a Victorian love knot at the base with an opal centerpiece. And a yellow tinted green sapphire at the bottom. Do not hesitate, dear. Choose whichever your heart desires. I can't wear all of it? They're all so gorgeous, I can't possibly choose. Nevertheless, I reach out, gravitating towards. <gasps> I thought I would be able to wear all of them. Oh my gosh. That necklace really did it for me, though. But it is a wedding. I think it's appropriate to choose the ring. I pick up the ring, inspecting it closer. The name Gallagher is engraved in the inner band with fancy cursive lettering. 
Elias gently takes it from me and slips it over my finger. It slides on easily without being too loose or too tight. A perfect fit. Like it was made for you. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. It's quite gorgeous. Is there a story behind this ring? A bright smile <laughs> blooms on Elias' face as he kisses my hand, the diamond sparkling on my finger. My grandfather held a high post as a military officer, being the personal guard to several members of the royal family in England. Okay. He was humble and full of wit, and thus could predict the enemy's movements far in advance. Mm hmm. Why, during his time, he actually thwarted an assassination attempt. Amazing. My eyes widened. Oh my, that's quite the life he must have lived. Indeed. They offered him a gift for stopping the attempted regicide. The deed to a gem mine. It was quite successful, and on top of that he managed to increase the productivity quite a bit. That's how he himself rose to aristocracy. Amazing. Elias' smile softens, eyes sparkling as he re regales the tale. When a civil war broke out, he fled to America with my grandmother, my father, and only a few belongings. It wasn't quite enough to maintain their previous lifestyle, at least not immediately. Okay. Yet regardless of how much they struggled, he still refused to sell the jewels. They represented everything he had been through. His dedication and hope despite the hardships. That determination inspired my father to start a business of his own. Eventually, he became a Kamiel Baron beyond compare. I thought that said cornmeal. <laughs> Elias lets out an awkward chuckle, looking away in embarrassment. I suppose I pale in relation. I never amounted to anything when compared to the great deeds my grandfather, father, and siblings accomplished in their lifetimes. Don't speak that way about yourself. Nonsense! I squeeze his hands compassionately. Compassionately? Yeah. You grew up kind, dear Elias. Hopeful and determined, just like your grandfather. It doesn't matter that it didn't apply to business. It certainly applied to your heart. My dear. Yeah? <laughs> Elias looks past me, biting his lip. I must confess something to you. I doubt that it will affect you now, but... Uh-oh. What? I brace myself. I have no idea what he plans to tell me. I adore you. But my mere existence is a blight. Stop! Uh... My polite mannerisms and lavish clothing are merely a thin veneer over the fact that I am weak, hideous, and undeserving of my status. <laughs> Why did he say hideous? Elias, don't say such awful things about yourself. You've never had the tools to succeed in a world that measures your worth by your productivity. Without even considering the bearers that hold you back, you were thrown into the meat grinder without emotional support or physical ability to meet the challenge head on. I take a breath to study myself. This system was not made with people like you in mind, so how could you be expected to succeed when you are pitied, oh pitted, against people who don't face the same struggles? And despite past neglect, you have always been hopeful. That is far more admirable in my eyes. You are far too kind. I appreciate your words greatly, however. <laughs> Elias grips me tighter as if afraid I might run off. The truth is, I was congenitally malformed. What does that mean? Malformed? I took another look at Elias, squinting at a glance. Oh, squinting. Sorry, let me read. At a glance, I could see nothing amiss. He seems to have all of his limbs, fingers, ears, eyes, and nose. His clothing portrayed no alterations in form or function. It's not immediately apparent, thanks to years of learning to adapt around my condition. But it's true. I... My feet are malformed, were malformed at birth, and so in life. 
I had difficulty walking. Compounding that oh. was a general sense of malaise that never improved over time. Elias pauses, gaze over, leaving mine, yet looking past me all the same. The family doctor had diagnosed the malaise as what was commonly known as a nervous disorder at the time, a condition which had then only recently been christened as multiple sclerosis. Being okay. that both my congenital deformity and acquired nervous disorder are incurable, my continued existence proved to be a great burden that only grew over time. I'm so sorry. Don't be don't be sorry. Come on. Like we got to we got to move past that that part of life. Or we have to feel sorry for people who are born different. It's just the way it is. We don't have to cry about it. My apology feels so in inadequate. But I don't know what else to say. What am I even apologizing for? That's what I'm saying. My gaze turns to the side as I think of something better to say. On its own, being ill is nothing to be sorry for. It's not within anyone's control, but when the system, the systems and people that should have provided support fail a person with an incurable condition, it truly is regrettable. That's a shame. Just because he wasn't able to walk. People disrespected him. Like, I I hate that. Elias was confined to a bed even though the condition itself could have been managed with proper support. Because his siblings had never needed that kind of support, that alone was enough to condemn Elias to an isolated life of hardship. My birth itself was difficult and caused my mother quite a lot of grief. I don't blame her for any resentment left over from that. Oh my gosh. They didn't have wheelchairs back then? You could have at least been able to, like, move around. No but one helped him? It wasn't him? all that. I consider it a blessing that my condition could be easily obscured, so I wouldn't bring further shame to the family name. I hate this. Nobody helped him to at least try to explore the house. We both glanced down to where his feet would otherwise be, now replaced by a ghostly translucent tail. Tell me, several decades have passed since my death. Surely both science and medicine have marched forward during that time. Yes! Oh, I- 1800s. God damn it! I keep forgetting! Yes, it has, my love. Are there cures now for the conditions I had in life? I hate to consider that anyone may still be suffering from these afflictions. I'm afraid the doctors still haven't found a cure for multiple sclerosis. We don't know a lot more about it, though. We do know a lot more about it, though. Some think it's an autoimmune disorder, and we can manage the symptoms. Some researchers even believe they've pinpointed the cause, though that is still to be seen. And then surgeons can provide prosthetics, artificial limbs, that is. Vast strides have been made for prosthetics since the Great War. It's an option of people if people can afford it. I manage a genuine smile at him. There are whole practices dedicated to learning how to live with and use a new limb. Fitting prosthetics for individual patients, therapies for regaining physical strength, and social integrity. Integri integration. I can read. There's so much to be hopeful for now. Elias closes his eyes, bowing his head. I see. That is a small comfort, I suppose. I'm glad it could do that much. Being disabled doesn't, does not make your life something to be ashamed of, Elias. You did the best you could with what you had, and... And I still intend to wed you, my dear. Who <laughs> said I was changing my mind because of that? Stop it. Stop it. Elias takes a breath. Regaining- I still can't just- I can't fathom it. Why would I still say no? Anyways, 
regaining his composure while loosening the grip on my hand. Let us dispel such unpleasantness now. Shall we take our leave for the ceremony? We shall. I do my best to nod and smile, the weight of his words still heavy in my heart. My arm wraps around his. We exit his bedroom together and go down the stairs one last time, with new excess my new accessory adding weight to my every step. Soon we shall be wed, my darling, and we'll have all of eternity together. Are you excited? A little bit. Just a little bit. Elias sure seems to be. I... I don't know how to answer that. Whether I should be sincere and tell him the truth or continue the charade. At the very least, I can confidently say that there's no way Elias is capable of expressing malice towards others. He's too sweet, too naive almost. Elias deserved better. Deserves better. But I am not the one he deserves. Huh? These feelings I have for him can only be described as pity. What? I can't love him the way he wants me to, the way he needs me to. Not today, at least. It's too soon for me to mean those three words he desperately needs to hear. Oh my gosh. An insincere declaration of love to Elias Gallagher would surely be a sin worse than murder. My love, what's on your mind? Bad things. Nothing. I, I mean, I really am a bad actor in the end. With everything that has happened, it's about to happen. I must be feeling the entire range of human emotion right now, my beloved. Nervous, excited, and so full of dread. Oh my gosh. We return to the foyer where this whole night began. Elias' guide glides along the floor while I do my best to keep up with him, trying not to arouse a suspicion. This is making me so sad. I'm sad. He places his hand on the door behind the steps, then turns to me. Are you ready, my love? I have worked tirelessly to prepare the old ballroom for a ceremony, and while we may not have any guests, I do hope that you will be pleased. Don't cry. Don't cry. My voice is hoarse. So the words get lost in my throat. All I can do is smile and nod. Excellent. Then without further ado. Okay. The doors to the ballroom open wide and Elias bids me through. I walk down the tattered red carpet through the dim cavernous room. Towards the center were extravagant dishes, aged bottles of wine, crystal glasses, silver cutlery, and finally our bouquet await us. It's so spooky in here. Oh my god. No one is watching. And yet with each step I can hear the echoes of whispers, murmurs, cheers, and sobs whenever my foot lifts from the floor. Are these memories of previous weddings Elias has attended? Now recreated for his own? I wonder who will of officiate. Elias must have some memory of a minister ready as well. I turn my head back and peer at the door, waiting for my groom. As he floats in, the noise grow more ru ruckus? Ruckus? <laughs> and the light lights bloom into a pale blue glow. My gaze is fixed on Elias. An eternity passes in a single second as he reaches the altar, beaming with endless pride. It's time. The crowd hushes down to a murmur before coalescing into a single echoing voice. Welcome all. Oh. Family and friends, thank you all for coming today to partake in this joyous occasion. Country bumpkin? Today we are gathered together 
to unite Elias Gallagher with his beloved. I still can't take my eyes off my groom. Long has he suffered, and now long shall he be overflowing with joy. Let the memories of betrayal, of murder, of waiting be washed away like leaves in a flood. Love has triumphed. Oh God, is this... If this is what Elias was, is thinking... Do you, Elias Gallagher, take this person to be your lawfully wedded spouse, to live together in matrimony, to love them, comfort them, honor and keep them, in sickness and in health, in sorrow and in joy, to have and to hold, from this day forward, now and for all time. Why am I getting so f***ing emotional? This is so stupid. It's a f***ing game. I do. <laughs> do you, my dear, take a last Gallagher to be your lawfully wedded husband, to live together in matrimony, to love him, comfort him, honor and keep him, in sickness and in health, in sorrow and in joy, to have and to hold from this day forward, now and for all time? Are they gonna make me choose? Oh my gosh! I... Oh... Stop! Taylor... <laughs> On... That door is so f***ing annoying. This is like the eighth time it's done that. Get it fixed, Elias. Get it fixed. Okay? You did everything else. Fix the hinges on that f***ing door. Anyways. One half of me is like, Marry him, you dumb bitch. And the other half is like, This is so fucking sad. I, like... I want to beat up the first person I see. Put him up. The slamming of the ain't. Oh gosh, this is gonna hurt. The slamming of ancient doors against the walls drown out all the memories in the ballroom, and the illusions disappear without a trace. Uh, who? The guest. Taylor. <laughs> It's Taylor, the guy I was talking about earlier. Aside from the angry echoing of footsteps, there's only me, Elias, and a very, very sweaty Taylor in this otherwise empty sanctuary. I have never been so happy to smell his attempts to mask the scent of sweat with overpowering cheap cologne. That's, that's right! This has to stop! You should have told Elias the truth ages ago! Uh, I don't know what to say. I should have told you the truth ages ago. What? My dear, is this the spirit medium you were talking to? This is hurting me on a physical level. It is. His name is Taylor. Taylor Potts. And... Taylor, why do you interrupt our ceremony? Speak now or forever hold your peace. He should do the second part. Okay, anyway. Elias's, uh, Elias's eyes flash with frustration. Oh, have I got some words for you, Gallagher. All of this? Taylor gestures wildly around the empty floor and tables. All of this is for nothing! This was a dumb attempt to find a ghost, and now I've put my best friend in extreme danger. I, I mean, I'm pretty safe. I wouldn't say I'm in danger. They didn't actually believe anyone was here. In my heart, I didn't believe it either. I was desperate. But we did our homework and read that you were obsessed with romance. The idea of it, at least. What? 
They aren't actually in love with you and have never been engaged to anyone before this. We went shopping for fancy clothes to trick you into appearing. Oh, they're talking about me. Okay. <sighs> this is so sad. So stop all of this. We're too young for marriage. We're both just college students, for goodness sake. We have our whole lives ahead of us. Not in this economy. Taylor's arms drop to his sides as he takes in a shaky breath. Elias, you should be mad at me. I set them up to do all this, but I should have been the one here, not you. He still would have tried to hit that. <laughs> so, I look between both of the men standing in front of me. Taylor's out of breath while Elias can't find the words. I think we should let OHSIC disband. We need to go home. It's over. Gosh, that hurts. What? But, Taylor, don't make decisions for me. My dear is right. They have been perfectly able to choose what they like. I provided plenty of opportunities and... Yeah, and they were playing you. <laughs> I'm hurt! I've been shot. Don't say that. <laughs> Taylor's previous... Forever gets a second wind at the sound of Elias' voice and he puffs his chest. Not as much as, you know what, it's not the time. Our goal was to prove you exist. Now we have and I regret it. I don't. Taylor. Besides, do you even realize what rushing into marriage does to people? What if it turns out that you two don't even like each other, or can't even stand being in the same room tomorrow? I had to do it! Room! <laughs> but also... Have you been hearing the things I say about this man? You gotta know that I like him. I don't know about you, Elias. There's only so many tabloids that we can salvage all the way back from like a hundred years ago. But have you ever had to watch your parents fight with each other behind closed doors? Behind closed doors? Nigga, I've seen it with my own eyes. But that has... That's not the same as this. I'll tell you that right now. Elias cocks a brow in confusion. All I can do is stand there and listen, trembling. Rushed! Unhappy marriages lead to divorce. Maybe your parents got along fine. Maybe they didn't. But if this was a regular wedding between you and Bud, you'd be waving a red flag for the whole state to see. But he's blue. Mom and Dad tried so hard to pretend things were okay when I was growing up. Oh, but okay. I wasn't stupid. I saw the exhaustion <laughs> on their faces. I heard what they said to each other. No one deserves that I uh, I have no words either but apparently I do I'm sorry Taylor I didn't besides after all this I realized I'm jealous <sighs> alright just, just go ahead. go ahead. oh all this time Wait, jealous of who? Me, I assume. There's a rival suitor vying for your affections. That's so unfortunate. It's true. I think you're great, and I really, really like you. I've wanted to tell you that for some time. Since about the day we met, to be honest. Honestly, <laughs> let's just be completely transparent here. Now this guy is perfectly fine. I'm not saying he's ugly. I'm just saying that if I saw someone with hips like this, I'd choose them in a heartbeat. 
You cannot tell me this isn't preferred. Look at those honker donker boingy twingies. And tell me you wouldn't choose this one over this one. If given the chance. I don't know what else to say. But you were such a good friend. A kind friend who supported me in everything I did. Yeah. But you were such a good friend. A kind friend who supported me in everything I did. Why did it do that twice? Oh, I think it said it in the the synopsis. It was like a bug or whatever. It re it repeated it. It's fine. I <laughs> I was scared to lose that. I was scared to make everything too big. Oh my gosh, these jokes write them fucking selves. Guess what else is too big? Anyways, but I guess I found a different way to make everything too big tonight, huh? <laughs> All right, okay, I'll stop. What a charming and sad story, Taylor. What are you about to do? Much to my surprise, Elias's voice drips with empathy. His words are genuine. Elias, you're... How could I not be moved? Okay. But, my dear, I need you to tell me the truth. Don't make me fucking choose. What did you come here for? <laughs> I just... I don't know if I can answer that. Because I'm gonna say something crazy. I came here to help Taylor find a ghost. Our ghost hunting group was in danger of closing. And we decided to investigate this place. We... New people broke into this place pretty often, and no one ever actually claimed to see any ghosts. So we decided to do what we could to make you appear. Nothing I told you about the previous wedding was true. I wasn't left at the altar. I was never even at the altar. I'm just an ordinary university student trying to help a friend. I see. Don't disappear. Stop. This is genuine sadness for him disappearing. When Jack did it, I couldn't care less. But this hurts. There it is. The truth is out. I suppose it had to happen sometime. If Elias could sink into the center of the earth, he probably would. The only thing keeping him afloat in some sense of decorum. But not all of this was a lie, was it? <laughs> Your demeanor changed as we spent time together. <laughs> you got to know me. You learned about the real me. And I think your heart opened. Oh no, come on, don't do this! <laughs> That's I what get I'm that saying. you're lonely, but you're completely missing the point here! Huh. What if I just die right now? Taylor, please. Where we go from here is up to them to decide. I'm I'm about to cut off the cameras. I'm about to shut this whole thing down. I thank you, Elias, for giving me a choice. I ask for your forgiveness. I can't say that I didn't mean to deceive you, but I regret it. Although I don't regret meeting you, I only wish it could have happened under better circumstances. I can't say that it doesn't hurt. I'm not sure if I will ever see you in the same way again. How do you think I f***ing feel? And yet, I am glad we met as well. <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh-huh. This day, it was perhaps the best day of my life. And death. I hate that it must end this way. <sighs> must it? <laughs> what? You were also correct when you said I got to truly know you, and you've been nothing but kind and loving towards me this whole time. I do want to be with you, Elias. What? Oh, wait, wait, wait. <gasps> uh, uh, we 
don't even actually get a choice. It kind of just happens. If you still have me. I... I could never comprehend the thought, the thousands of emotions that must be beating through Elias' heart. Yeah, that big ass chest. Taylor is trying to say something, but I can't hear him. I love. I want our happiness to thrive. Will you learn to love me in joy and despair until the end of time and beyond? If you do something crazy after this, I'll never forgive you. I will. I do. I'm trying not to stumble over my words, but I think I managed to choke them out correctly. Then we are what? Elias takes my- <laughs> Elias takes my hand, fingers tracing the ring he slipped on my finger. <laughs> he holds me close. He kisses my lips and I nearly faint again. But once this kiss is over, I'm awake, alive, staring deeply into my husband's eyes. It is done, my love. Now, shall we elope on our honeymoon? Taylor, my dear medium, I ask you to help us see the world. I... Uh... We can revolutionize your ghost club. We can change humanity. And I know my love appreciates all that you've done for them. It's true. <laughs> I turn to face Taylor who's extremely interested in the floor. All of a sudden, a crimson blush tingle tinging his cheeks. Taylor... Maybe I would have dated you if you had asked me. I think it's too late now. But you've always been a good friend and I have always cherished you. If I didn't, I'd never come. I'd never have- Shit. I'd never have come to this mansion. I shouldn't have said anything. This burns. I'm burning. No, you- You should have. You care for me so much. I love you, Taylor. I hope you can understand how. I put a hand on his shoulder and lean in to give him a peck on the cheek. But I want to love Elias Gallagher too, and I'm ready to spend the rest of my life with him. I, I don't want to be a third wheel. I I'll go. You do know what a threesome is, right? <laughs> You're not! You know what? You and Elias spend an hour getting to know each other. I'll take some time to myself. I could use a break. You're gonna change the world, Taylor. I just know it. I wave to them both and step out of the ballroom. Wow. I kissed a ghost and married a ghost and fell in love with a ghost. And not 12 hours ago, I thought I was getting all gussied up for nothing. I rub Elias' ring, enjoying the embrace on my finger. It shines in the dim light as if it were a candle. So I do my own- so do I own this mansion now? Or partly own it? I guess so. We'll have to start thinking about repairs. But this isn't the world. This- This doesn't have to be the world. I walk through the halls down the foyer and step right out the front door. And the world is ready to greet me. I'm ready to greet it. The morning sun is beginning to peek over the horizon. I watch with contentment as it climbs into the sky, ready to light up the world around it. Soon, Elias and Taylor find me waiting for them outside. Everything hashed out? Hashed? Oh. Do you not know that word? Yeah, we've gotten to know each other. And we've come up with an idea. How long were you just sitting there? Yes. I'm not particularly excited by the prospect of becoming a freak show to gawk at. 
But my flowers, those are another thing. Okay. Ready to start a spectral florist shop? Absolutely. <laughs> what shall we call it? Gallagher spectral exotic flowers and bouquets? I guess. It's hey, a mouthful, I get though. to have my name in there, too. We're business partners now, after all. Okay. I let the two boys bicker and rest my head on Elias's ethereal shoulder? Shoulder? What about those? Shoulder. You disappoint me. It's going to take some adjustment, but I can't help feeling as though everything is as it should be. I can't help but feel that way too. That was... Ending B for love. I won. <laughs> I won! Well, I guess that's the end of the Groom of Gallic Mansion. If you guys would like to see maybe the other endings, because apparently there's, um, I believe four? Let me see. Oh, right here. One, two, three, four, and then I got five. This one. So there's five endings, I think. So, yeah. If you guys would like to see the other endings, like, see me actually post it, leave this video a like and subscribe for more videos besides this. That was so amazing. I'm sorry. And with that being said, I will see you guys next time.